Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to talk about how I made the environment for the game Atlas Empires. You can find out more about the game, playlists, beginner courses and tutorials. All those links will be in the description. Okay, so this time I thought I'd just show you what I'd done rather than do a time lapse in terms of the building aspects. So I'll show a time lapse of the painting, but I won't show a time lapse of how it was built. So you can see the general scale here. And you can see these tiny buildings here are the buildings. I thought I'd just put those in to give an idea of how the scale will end up. So that's roughly the size they'll be. And then we've got this big environment around the outside. Now, if I go into each of these models, you can see the simplicity that's there. They still are linked duplicates. So when I go into edit mode, you can see that they're all selected. So when I edit one, it will edit all of them. And I did this in the same way that I usually do these things. So in a modular approach, therefore I only needed to make a few objects rather than lots and lots. It also saves on UV space. So one, I don't have to paint lots of them. And two, it won't take up lots of space in the program. So you can see in terms of the models, they're very simplistic. I built the very basic shape and then decimated it just to give it that distorted organic look. And they're all very similar. They've been unwrapped as well with a simple unwrap around the middle and around the top. I think that's the same for most of them. If you look at the trees, they are separate objects, although joined together at the end. If I isolate this and come under here, you can see that they're each a separate kind of cylinder with the top and the bottom chopped off. I've given them that sort of wibbly wobbly base so they look like branches and then obviously painting the detail in there and rotated them each time as I go up, scaling them in and you've got a nice low poly tree. The ground element such as the grass here is just a plane with a grass texture that I've made. And if you'd like a tutorial on how to paint these sort of textures so that they're seamless and they can be tiled like this, then let me know. Same for the water, although that's not tiled, that's just painted on, very simplistic. Although that's going to be replaced later for an actual animated texture. These sort of rocky plates are a little bit rough to be honest. I probably should have retopologized these better. You can see slight distortion at the edges, so the shading at the edges. It's very minimal, so it doesn't matter too much, but a better topology would have probably been better here. So when it's so uneven like this and there's big triangles next to the edges, you can get some slight distortion, especially long, thin triangles like this. I made it as a plane and then solidified it and then just applied that and deleted the bottom face. And of course, all of them have the bottoms chopped off to save on rendering. And these rocks also are very simple. So nothing too complicated, but it is kind of how you put them together that makes the nice look in the end. When placing objects, generally speaking, you sort of clump them together. It's just one of those strange sort of environmental design things. And in fact, I got some tips from interior design that putting things in threes is quite aesthetically pleasing. So you can see a lot of the time I'm putting them in groups of three. Having said that, you do need variation, so you don't want to go overboard with that sort of thing. So you can see there is a bit of variation around the place. So that was how I built it. Now on to a bit of the painting. You can see I'm halfway through, but I thought I'd show you just how I painted things like the rocks and put those swirly shapes on. Fairly simplistic, really. The usual way, get your base color in first, adding color variation, so very slight off grays, uh, reddish, greenish, and so forth to act kind of like reflections and discoloration in the rock. And then make sure the top is lighter than the bottom so it's catching the light. And then add some details so you can see those simple swirls, adding sort of black and white elements to them. The shapes are relatively simplistic and it's a common theme, that sort of swirly rock stylized characteristics. It did take me quite a long time to situate the models and put them into position. And for a long time, I wasn't very comfortable with how it was looking and doubting as to whether this was going to look any good or not. That's quite a common theme sometimes with artists that you are going through a piece and you're really struggling, uh, but it's a project that you know you've got to complete. So you keep going and going and eventually things turn out all right. But it was a little bit frustrating, a little bit worrying that it just wasn't looking how I had hoped. So these sort of uh, rocky plates, I think I probably could have done with a bit more contrast than these, but it turned out all right in the end. So just going around, highlighting the edges as normal, um, adding a sort of swirly shape to start with. So that was with the uh, blend brush or the smear brush. Uh, you can see it on the next one here uh, that I'll sort of blend different colors into each other with the smear brush to give it that sort of swirly look. And then I go in with the sort of harsh lines um, as if the rock's been broken up and the highlights around the edges, 
the cracks and the creases with the multiply brush. Although I change now and again from the multiply brush uh, to just the color and don't worry too much about it. But using the highlights and the shadows as per normal. When you're building these environments, you have to obviously consider the scale. I know that's fairly obvious, but uh, this is a huge, uh, expansive space uh, in terms of how big the buildings are. So you've got to think how close is the uh, camera going to be to them realistically, but also um, how they're going to fit together with the rest of the scene. So before starting the environment, I needed to ask Chris, the lead artist, exactly the sizes and uh, how things were going to be situated and so forth, and get a clear idea of that before um, I built the rest of it. Although whilst I was waiting for that information, I was able to build some of the modules because I could obviously just resize them. But when it came to hand painted textures, I wanted to wait until I knew exactly the sizes so it didn't look out of place and all awkward. As I've already said, the water texture will be added in later. I didn't realize this at this point, so I'd already uh, built them in and uh, painted them and then found out later they were going to be replaced. I think that's a really nice idea to have them sort of animated. So animated elements of the background are really going to sell it and make it look really nice. With things like the water, I was able to actually add some ambient occlusion. So where it's touching other objects, I could put in a darker shade. That's because this shape wasn't modular. So of course, when you're doing modular stuff, you can't do the shadows in because it will repeat across other shapes. So when you rotate them to try and make them look different or resize them or anything like that, your shadows are going to change as well. So you can't add shadows in. It's always a frustration because the hand painted stuff, you're generally putting your shadows in with the hand painted work that you're doing. So in this modular work, it does have a tendency to look a little bit flat when it's finished. These rocks I found really tough. I'm not really sure why I found them so tough, but I did. <laughs> they just didn't look right for a long time. I thought I'd actually keep the mistakes in so you could actually see the process that I've gone through to come to uh, the final design. I think one of my problems was that it wasn't high poly enough and I could have just put a few more polys on to make it a bit smoother. But I had the idea that it was going to be sort of a hard, cracky surface with highlights around the place, but it didn't really go with the swirly um, roundness of it. <laughs> so um, I was going through these designs and it just really didn't work and it just looked uh, a bit of a mess really. Uh, so um, I did change it up in the end, but hopefully you can see from this uh, one, the difficulties you might have when you're doing this sort of work and how some things just don't work. Uh, and also how you, after working on them for a while, you can change your designs and uh, maybe you'll see some different ideas for designs in here as well. So I thought I would leave it in. I think it looks okay like this, but it just didn't really go with my environment. The rock did look a bit too uniform, so I sort of pushed it around and changed the shape slightly. Really, you should unwrap again then, but it was such a minor adjustment, it didn't matter too much. I suppose looking back, they didn't look awful or anything, but uh, I just wasn't quite happy with the, the rocky design with the swirls. They didn't quite make sense to me, so I kept working on it and working on it, and uh, finally came up with something that I was a bit more happy with. It's strange, looking back at this process and doing this commentary, I'm starting to think it doesn't look that bad and maybe I was overreacting. I was a tiny bit ill at the time and I think that can make a difference to how you're feeling about your work and you can get a bit more frustrated. So although I'd like to say, uh, if you're feeling ill, don't work and take a break, uh, it's not always that simple, is it? <laughs> but I do think it still is very important to take lots of breaks so you can step away from your artwork. When you come back to it, you'll suddenly see it in a different light. I think I did that, and even coming back to it, I thought, no, I'm not happy with it. I'm changing it all. I think another aspect that I might not have been so happy with is the fact that they were a bit more detailed than the other shapes. By that, I mean the other rocks in the scene. So they might have looked out of place when they were inserted into the scene. You can see here that I've changed my mind and I'm smoothing things out. So those bits in between, just uh, smearing them out, it looks, I think, a bit better when it's a bit more smeared like that. And actually the rocks themselves, when the colours smeared around the place, um, I think helps uh, give it that sort of flow and that nice roundness. But they are probably still a bit too blocky and they needed a few more polygons, just a few more to round it out. Uh, but I think this was a minor point in the end and it all worked out all right. So I would have gone back and changed it if I'd put it into the scene and it hadn't worked fully. So I'm not too worried. I think it worked out well in the end. So you can see I'm a bit happier now and I'm ready to move on to the next one. 
I'm trying to speed up this workflow a bit because I know the deadline's looming and uh, we haven't got much time before the game needs to be released, so I know they were waiting for this piece of work. So although you might want to do the best, absolute most amazing piece of work possible, sometimes you do have to think about the time and really the needs of the project and the client's wants and wishes. So I could have probably gone a bit further with all these objects, but in reality, they're not really going to be noticed. You might do that tiny bit of extra detail that you think is, looks really great and you're really happy that it's a bit more polished, uh, but in the end, no one's going to notice it except you and you've spent all that extra time. So there is a kind of balance that you need to get with that sort of thing. So with the tree, I started with the trunk, filling in the color to start with, then filling in with some simple uh, bark sort of lines following the flow of the wood and just highlight, multiply, different brushes. It came out quite nicely, the trunk actually, I was quite pleased with that. Then it came to the sort of leaves and branches. Now this is a bit more tricky because you can see the sharp edges to the bottoms of the shape, but I needed to act like that was uh, perhaps sort of branches that were sticking out. So it really needs to be broken up and that's uh, through light and dark, so the highlights and crevices again. And it's a difficult one when you've got uh, no sort of uh, shape to work with. So you've got very flat surfaces and harsh lines. So it's always gonna be tricky with a low poly tree making it look like leaves and branches because uh, you don't want to add all those extra polygons to it. I possibly could have had more, but again, the environment itself is an awful lot of polygons in total. So if you add just a few extra polygons to each of your shapes, it's gonna add up when you add all the different trees in and all the different rocks in. So I was a bit nervous of adding too many polygons to my initial shapes. It may be the case that I'm being a bit too paranoid with polygons these days because I haven't really kept up with advancements in terms of how much polygons you can use, but I know that it's always been an issue for game artists to try and reduce them as much as possible. So I don't want to flagrantly use polygons where I don't need to. But there have been a few objects in the scene that I was surprised when they said that's an okay amount. So some of the buildings I thought were getting a bit too high poly, but they said, nope, that's absolutely fine. I think one of my sets came to over a thousand faces, so I was concerned at that point, but again, they said that was fine, so <laughs> I didn't have to worry. Now comes the fun bit, really, just placing the items in and just moving them around. Like I said, in sort of groups of three is quite a common um, sort of interior design idea, but mixing it up every now and again, so you can see I've sort of copied a set and then moved it across. And although it's not going to be seen and it's going to be taken out, I did want to do some lily pads on the water. It only took me a short amount of time, but I really wanted to add those in for the render and this uh, video. I don't know why, it just sort of broke up the water a bit and made it look more interesting in my opinion. That is something I would have worked on more is the water because it's a bit sort of blobby and uh, sort of non-textured, but uh, it was going to get taken out, so I wasn't too worried. I just went to cross the shapes a little bit, uh, making sure that I was happy with how they looked and integrated with each other. And I did actually change a few things around in terms of the colour and the saturation and things just to have a quick look, making sure they all sat together well. So there we have it, the finished environment with the uh, small buildings in, so you can see it there in the background. Generally speaking, it sounds like the camera is going to be roughly around here, or further, slightly further out than this, to be fair, but uh, around this area, so you can sort of see how the environment is going to sit and how much detail you need to put in your objects. So thanks for following along on the journey. There's only a few more sets to show you, so I'm coming to the end of this contract, but do comment below with any thoughts you have, anything else you want to hear about. Perhaps there's some questions for the developers that you'd like me to try and ask and get some information from. And if you're still with me at this point, then thanks very much. You can write that in the comments. It always makes me feel happy to think that people are watching right to the end like this. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.